Hello everyone, Ryan here with Product Impressions, and I've always been a big fan of e-ink displays, so I was curious about trying one in an Android tablet. There is basically one company that makes products like this, and they are called Onyx with the Books line of tablets. They have three different sizes. One of them is over 13 inches and runs you about $850, way too much money. The next is about 10 and a half inches, which I think would be a good size, but that one is still about $550, still a bit too much money. And then you drop down to this, which is the Books Nova 2. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this one is about a 7.8 inch screen. It is running Android 9.0. Uh, has an e-ink display, comes with uh, a pen for drawing, taking notes, things like that. I'm really interested in seeing how this works, so uh, let's pop this thing open, give it a try. Alright, I ordered this device directly from the Onyx company. It shipped from China. Total shipping time took about two weeks. Here we have the box itself, which this is supposed to be a actual size picture of the tablet. Looks like it'll be a comfortable size to hold. Pretty simple, uh, simple boxing. All of the information in a lot of different languages. 7.8 inch HD screen. There's the resolution, 300 pixels per inch, which is very nice. It does have a front light, both cold and warm lights. Octa-core processor, three gigs of RAM. Touchscreen, wireless. Uh, USB-C with on-the-go capability, which means you can connect any other accessories to it and they should work automatically, like keyboards, mouse, other storage, things like that. Uh, yeah, so that is the box for the device itself. Since I ordered it directly from the company, I'm also getting uh, a specially made cover for it, a screen protector, which appears to have come a little bit crunched in there. Hopefully it's not actually damaged. But let's go ahead and see what we have inside here. Pretty simple box, a little bit of uh, glossy on matte. Should just drop out here. There we go. And there we have the device itself. Along with another screen protector. So I guess it comes with two of them then. Pretty nice looking display. Let's see here. Slide out this device. Can't quite get a good grip on the plastic. There we go. That looks very nice. Uh, it is smooth. There is glass all the way across here. A little bit of depth between the glass at the surface and the screen itself. Hopefully that won't interfere with uh, intuitive use very much. Do just have a home button down here? A uh, power button on top of the device here and that is pretty much it as far as uh, ports and buttons are concerned. Looks like we do have a little bit of a uh, microphone hole there, USB type C for charging and accessories and that is it. Alright, what else do we have in the box? Uh, type C cable a pen, a stylus. This is supposed to have uh, over 4,000 degrees of pressure, so it's supposed to be very good for sketching and doing art stuff. Never been too big on that, but yeah, give it a try. And some other paperwork for the device itself. Instructions in a whole variety of languages. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so Let's go ahead and take a look at the screen cover, at the uh, device cover. I pretty much always use covers with tablets, so I'm more concerned about uh, the 
larger cover than I am with any screen protector. That feels pretty nice. Uh, a little plasticky, but you know, not not bad, and I'm not certainly not going to complain about a free screen protector or a free cover. And it looks like this is actually just done with a double-sided adhesive, which is definitely less than ideal. But uh, I guess it's better than nothing. I'm probably going to look online to see if I can find something that actually holds it rather than simply sticking to it. But yeah, we'll we'll see if I actually use that or not. All right, let's go ahead and get things set up. Let's take a look at what it is like to use an Android tablet with an e-ink display. I went ahead and stuck with their thin case. I tried a normal case like I had for other tablets and found that it just it makes this bulkier than it needs to be and so I really just enjoy having it be more minimal. Uh, this is what their general user interface looks like. The main thing that you'll see is this sidebar here. It automatically opens to a library when you first start up the tablet and you can see whatever books you may have downloaded. You also have a sec separate section for storage. Or sorry, th this is the store, not storage. <laughs> storage is down here. Um, Onyx has their own store for you to download e-ink titles and so you can get to things through there. They'll show up in your library if you buy them. They do have note software, so you can take notes, which is pretty much the only purpose of this pen. You can, uh, let's see. Uh, writing is pretty slick. The plastic nib does glide across the glass screen very easily, so it's not quite like writing on paper, but it is nice. You do, ha you do have a whole lot of different options on the side here. One of the main ones to consider here is the AI function. You can tap that and it will try to recognize what you have written. So, hello, and I underlined it twice, so it thought that that was an equal sign. But I have found that it does work pretty well. It has a slightly harder time with some of the swirls of cursive, but by and large, you can handwrite notes in here and then turn them into text. So if you want to take notes in class or something like that, that is an option. Another thing to consider with the library here, let's just pop open a book. This is one that I've had to get for, uh, for work. MaxQDA is a software that we use, but the main reason why I open this up is in their notebook, if you want, you can actually take notes inside of the notebook, and if you exit out of the book that you are in and go back in, you will still have all of these underlines, handwritten notes. Uh, I believe it is also possible to split the screen. You can flip around the pen and use an eraser as well. It is possible to split the screen and take notes on each page, so that is a nice functionality as well. Storage is just all of the files that you have in the device itself. Let's go ahead and tap that. Here it is in the books right now. We can go back out. You see all the different directories. It is kind of a simplified layout of storage if you're used to Android devices, but I find that it works very nicely. And finally, you can there's an apps section here. I did put on Amazon Kindle because I do have other ebooks which I have bought from Amazon, so you need to have the app to read those. And various other uh, files. Let's pop open Chrome. You can see that this is a normal Google Chrome browser. You can, uh, you know, slide around to see your stories or whatever else you normally look at in Chrome. It works basically just like a browser on any other tablet. The one thing that I have noticed is if you pop this on, with it automatically filling in things, 
on a grayscale screen, it's very difficult to see what you have actually typed and what is automatically filling in. So that is one thing to notice. Uh, another, another interesting thing that I have found is there is this Gutenberg.org website, which actually includes a lot of ebooks from classic literature, pretty much anything in um, public domain you can get for free from here. And those are some of the books that you saw in the book section of the tablet as I've downloaded a few books to check out on here. Uh, I did find out that this is actually a back button, not a home button. So if you press back, it goes to the previous screen, which is all of the uh, apps that I have downloaded. It really very much makes the internet look like a newspaper. Let's pop open the Google Play Store. You can see a little bit more what that looks like. So here, I believe this one changes every once in a while, or not anymore. Um, basically, you can see with the grayscale screen, it's very much like looking like a newspaper, which I actually find very pleasant. I do have Apex Launcher on here just for demonstration purposes. Let's pop that open. This is a normal uh, launcher that you could use on any Android device, and you can see it does work. I have had to download a kind of black lines icon package. Otherwise, these just wound up looking like amorphous black blobs that you couldn't really tell what they were. So that's, um, it's not great. I've basically left it on here just so that you can see that it does work, but I would recommend just sticking with the browser that they have. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap this little ball down here in the corner. This is something that they have added onto the software for this device, which I find fantastic. It's a menu that you can always get to. And you can choose what you want in each one of these bubbles as well. Uh, this is a settings, um, settings icon, but what it goes into actually is the display settings for the app that is open at the time. So you can see you can change uh, how precise the screen is, you can change the font, whether or not the background gets whiter. The main reason this is important is here we have refresh. And there are four different options as far as how the screen is going to refresh. Right now it is set to normal, so this is the, uh, if you've ever used an e-reader, this is what you would expect of an e-reader. Every time you touch something, the entire screen refreshes. If you're like typing on the keyboard or anything, it gets very flashy and difficult to use. Uh, but these other options, I find that this one, it's called the A2, is the most usable. Um, for the time being, I am just gonna go back uh, to the home so that I can actually show you the difference in this. Let's pop open. Google, it's just something that is easy to scroll through, all of the pre-fed uh, pre stories. So you can see, you can scroll through the stories. It works reasonably well. Uh, it's not super smooth, but that's not surprising. If we go into the settings here, oh, it says it's not available for the system. That's interesting. I don't know why that happens every once in a while, but in any case, you can also slide down from the top of the screen. You can adjust the uh, background lighting. So you can see it is much brighter. We can dim it down. I have these options. You have warm and cool uh, lighting options. I have them synced together, so it's really more of just a brightness rather than uh, yellow or blue light. You also have normal Android functions back home, and recently opened apps, uh, Wi-Fi, rotation settings, Bluetooth settings, uh, speed mode, this is the refresh, and contrast. So let's see if we can change it from here. Right now it is in speed mode. Let's go up to X, which is supposed to be their fastest uh, refresh. You can see it's a little bit 
grayer, a little bit fuzzier, and when you slide it, the scrolling is actually smoother than it was on the previous mode. This is usable, but you can also see there's kind of a gray box here. That is because of the picture sliding across the screen. There's a lot of ghosting with that, and so I prefer leaving it on either A2 or speed mode. Speed tends to go quickly, but then every once in a while the screen will completely refresh so that it gets rid of any of the ghosting if you leave it long enough. But yeah, that is pretty much how this device works. You do have settings here as well, which looks a little bit different from normal uh, Android software, but all of your settings are here. Uh, you can check for updates. There was an update that uh, came out about a week ago. I haven't noticed much of anything except that when you open this up, the Wi-Fi starts up much faster. So yeah, let's go back to the app and it automatically shuts off when you close the uh, lid on there. There are the magnets on top and bottom which is what lets it know to close. When you open it up, it has to wake up again, and you see the Wi-Fi up here. Uh, it does actually shut off when you close the cover, so it completely goes to sleep. You won't get any notifications or anything like that. And it'll take it a minute to actually refresh everything if you get emails or anything along those lines. One thing to note is there actually are no speakers on here, so while it is possible to have a video play, you won't have sound unless you are connected to a Bluetooth speaker. I won't bother showing you the videos because they do work, but uh, it only really works in that X mode. Things get pretty fuzzy, and it's really not worth watching. All right, so I've been using the books Nova 2 for a few months now, or not a few months, I'm sorry, a few weeks, and I must say I am impressed with the device. The battery will last for more than a week. I must say that uh, I haven't actually run the battery down yet, uh, but it did last for about a week after I did the initial setup, which, of course, takes more battery power. It's refreshing the screen a lot more. The second week, there was a firmware update that downloaded and installed, and the battery lasted more than a week after that. So I'm perfectly comfortable saying you'll probably get about 10 days or so out of the battery life if you're using this for general checking of emails, reading some online stories through Google or uh, newspaper websites, things like that. Great device for that. Uh, I love that they have the settings that you can change for each individual uh, program that you're using and the menu down here in the corner. Well, you can put it wherever you want, but I have it in the corner. You can choose whatever shortcuts you want. I think that is a great addition for this device. Uh, however, would I recommend buying one of these? Not this model. I'm saying that because things are changing very rapidly in the space of e-ink tablets. Um, if you want to go with something that has a proven track record, they have another option coming out, the POKE 2, which unfortunately you can't quite see on the screen there. There we go. The POKE 2 is the same software as this, but on a six inch screen. So that is like, your standard Kindle e-reader. You can tell that the screen is definitely smaller, but it's still going to be usable for emailing, reading some online web pages, things like that. And of course, this size screen has been great for reading e-books and stuff like that forever. Uh, easy to hold, what have you. This one, also good for all of those things but where the new device with a six inch screen is $189 coming out, this one is 340. So you can save a lot of money, get a device with the same uh, capabilities. And I'm guessing the Pope 2, when it actually comes out is going to be better. They do also have a, a larger version called the Note 2, 
That one is a 10 and a half inch screen for $550. If you're interested in trying one of these, I would recommend just going with a small one. You'll probably get all of the functionality that you need out of that. Now I did say that the space is developing rather quickly right now. I'm gonna bring up a news story here. I know you're probably not going to be able to read it, but headline is Onyx Books is developing a color e-reader. Uh, so that is going to be an update of the Poke model. It's going to be like Poke Color or something along those lines. No information yet on pricing, but it will still have the same 300 or so pixels per inch on a black and white screen, which it can still do. But if you want to view things in color, that will also be possible at about 100 pixels per inch. So the screen will not be as clear with color, but it will be an option. It's still not going to be good for watching videos or anything like that. But for other, you know, news stories, things like that, Twitter, where color might be helpful, Facebook, things like that will actually be quite good on something like this, I would imagine. So while I am happy with the uh, Note 2, or sorry, Nova 2 e-reader from books, I would not recommend that you buy it because in just a few days, a smaller one with the same functionality is going to be coming out. And later this year, you're going to be able to get one in color. Again, no word on pricing yet, but I think either of those would be much better options than this. I'm happy with it. I'm glad I have it right now. I would not recommend that someone else buy it. In any case, those are my thoughts with the uh, Nova 2 from Onyx books. Uh, if this has been helpful or informative or entertaining to you, uh, usual YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.